Okay, so I'm going to be doing the properties of algebra. I'm going to be doing distributive, associative, and commutative properties. Okay, so let's start off with the distributive property of addition. The distributive property is used to simplify a math sentence that has one number and two other numbers within parentheses. So an example would be a times open parentheses b plus c is equal to a times b plus a times c. So basically all you're doing is just distributing a to b and a to c. And that equals this. Okay, so let's do some examples. So for the first one, we know 7 plus 8 is equal to 15. Multiply that by 3, and we get 45. So if we do it using the distributive property, we have 3 times 7 is equal to 21. And 3 times 8 is equal to 24. Add 21 and 24, you get 45 the same answer we got up here, proving that the property does work. Now for the second one, we have 2 plus 4 go to 6. Multiply that by 8, we get 48. Now if we do it using the distributive property, we have 8 times 2 is equal to 16. 8 times 4 is equal to 32. 16 plus 32 is 48. Same exact answer we got up here. Now for the last one. 8 plus 7, 15. Multiply that by 1, we get 15. Using the distributive property, we have 1 times 8 is equal to 8, and 1 times 7 is equal to 7. 7 plus 8 is equal to 15. Same answer we got up here. So now we go on to our second property, the associative property of multiplication. The associative property states that you can solve a problem regardless of its parentheses groupings. An example would be A times, in parentheses, B times C is the same as saying, in parentheses, A times B times C. All you're doing is changing the parentheses groupings to different places, which in reality doesn't really change your answer. Okay, so let's try some. For the first one, we have 5 times 2 is equal to 10 times 7 is equal to 70. But if we move the parentheses over 1, changing the groupings, we have 5 times 2 times 7, which is equal to 14 times 5, which is also equal to 70. Same answer we got here. Now, for the second one, we have 8 times 1 is equal to 8, times 2 is equal to 16. If we change the groupings over 1, we have 8 times 1 times 2, equal to 2, times 8, also equal to 16. Same answer again. For the last one, we have 4 times 3 is equal to 12, times 2 is equal to 20, 24. Now if we change the groupings, we have 3 times 4 times 2 is equal to 8, times 3 also equal to 24. Same answer again. And then we move on to our third and final property, which is the commutative property of multiplication. The commutative property states that you can switch the order of two numbers and get the same exact result. An example would be a times b is equal to b times a. All you're doing is just switching the order. Okay, so let's try a few. So we know 5 times 7 is equal to 35. All we're doing is just switching the order. So we do 7 times 5, which is also equal to 35. 
Number two. Eight times two is equal to sixteen. Same exact thing as two times eight. Also equal to sixteen. And the final one. Thirteen times seven is equal to ninety-one. Same thing as seven times thirteen. 13 equaling to 91. And that's all there is to it. Okay, so you learned three properties today. Um, I hope you learned a lot, and thanks for watching.